Thunderlord is an exotic heavy machine gun that was introduced in a quest at the end of Festival of the Lost. The intrinsic perk, Rain Havoc, causes kills with the weapon to rain lightning from above. The second perk, Lightning Rounds, causes the weapon to speed up its rate of fire the longer the trigger is held down. Continuous hits also cause lightning to hit the target. It also has Feeding Frenzy as a hidden perk, which causes the weapon to reload faster after kills. For a brief history lesson, Thunderlord was an exotic from Destiny 1 and was basically the king of machine guns for the duration of the game. It had high damage in PvE, was extremely lethal in PvP since it killed in 4 shots, and just had a good stat spread that made you compare just about every other machine gun to it. Now that it's in D2, does it hold up to the legacy of the D1 version? Well, short answer is yes. Good, yeah. Thunderlord is a wonderful example of what all reprised exotics should be. It has all the aspects of what made such a loved weapon in D1, and then it improves upon those for the D2 sandbox. So, let's go over this gun quickly in PvP. Earlier, I mentioned that Thunderlord killed in 4 shots back in D1. Well, in D2, it's going to take at least 5 precision shots, but the rate of fire has also increased so you can quickly melt someone provided you hit him in the face. That should also be pretty easy since machine guns have a very high aim assist. This gun will pick up 51 rounds from a heavy brick, so if you hit your shots perfectly, you can get 10 kills. But back down in the realm of realism, with recoil, flinch, and human error, you can usually land about 4-5 to five kills with this gun, assuming you properly flank targets and just aren't firing down lanes. Obviously, the killstreak possibilities with this gun are high, but it isn't an instant win button like most other heavy weapons. Machine guns in D2 still have a time to kill in PvP, and if someone rushes you with a shotgun or just times their shots right, you absolutely can be outshot. On PC, a competent Luna or Not Forgotten user can make you retreat into cover if their shots are on point. The thing to remember about machine guns in PvP is that people can shoot back, so you want to try and flank as much as possible. Don't just run into the first sight line on a control point. You will probably be team shot and give up that heavy brick to the enemy team. However, letting some teammates move in first will allow you to unleash holy carnage on unsuspecting people. That's where Thunderlord shines. In group fights where you are not the first person to enter the fray, you don't have to be extremely close either. The engagement range is similar to pulse rifles for the most part, assuming you can control the recoil. So don't feel like you have to push into those closer ranges to ensure eliminations. Is it worth the exotic slot in PvP? Yeah. Aside from getting team shot, you will win almost every 1v1 with this gun. If you play it right and find encounters where people are grouped up, you will probably just shred through the enemy team with the AoE damage. Now moving over to Gambit, I'll just summarize by saying that Thunderlord is a top pick. Its high ammo count, high PvE damage, and deceptively long range make it a jack of all trades for your heavy slot. The AoE damage on kills helps clear through ad waves, the lightning damage on successive hits helps stagger beefier targets, and it's something to fear from invaders. At the same time, it all feels fair. You can get a more specialized tool like Queenbreaker's Bow for invasions, but I really enjoy how Thunderlord is just ready for whatever I throw at it. I can use it for damage, or counter an invasion or just clear through a wave of blockers and let my team bank. Moving over to pure PvE, Thunderlord is absolutely at the top of the weapons to use in basically any activity, be it public events to burn down various high health mobs, strikes to burn through waves of enemies with explosions, raids to hilariously melt a boss when everyone is using it. Thunderlord is, just for lack of a better word, insane. The fact that it benefits from machine gun reserves is awesome as well since you can hold another 100 rounds in your arsenal. As a side note, if the thing you are doing features taken enemies, you you should definitely put on an armor piece with a Taken Armament mod in it. With Scavenger, Reserves, and Taken Armaments, you can effectively just use Thunderlord as a primary. This is some of the top levels of fun for me in the game, wielding this immense power without any reservation for stopping. The defining feature for PvE, since you don't really get to see it in PvP, is that it increases its rate of fire the longer you hold the trigger down. It lets the gun be a Swiss army knife, so to speak. Low rate of fire when taking out adds, and high rate of fire when it's time to punch through damage into a beefy target. Unlike some other perks, the gun's archetype doesn't change when the rate of fire does. You're still dealing that same high damage you were at the start, just even faster now. Thunderlord pairs best when you have the ability to continually cheat ammo into the magazine, so Warlock, Luna Faction Rift, and Titan Rally Barricade are going to allow you to pump out more damage since you won't have to stop to reload, and you can keep firing at that max rate of fire that you've ramped up to. 
I feel like I'm repeating myself a little bit with all the good portions of Thunderlord. So to summarize, yes, you can deal a ton of damage, explode stuff on kills, reload quickly due to hidden feeding frenzy perk, the rate of fire increases as long as you hold the trigger down, and the cherry on top is that those rapid hits will probably stagger enemies consistently enough that you won't need to take damage from them. Now some things to look out for are how you go about doing damage. Machine guns as a whole are a little bit reliant on landing precision shots, so if all possible, take a little bit of extra time when aiming to make sure you can maximize your damage output. Despite all the good things about this gun, it is also not Whisper of the Worm and does not have infinite ammo. So in some encounters, if you need to deal a lot of damage over longer periods of time, or you're under leveled and want to make sure that you're able to last through whole damage phases, you will probably want to put away Thunderlord. This is really apparent in the final encounter of the Scourge of the Past raid. The boss does have a lot of health, and when I've tried using Thunderlord, I usually find myself having to stop and use a sniper towards the end of damage phases. The issue isn't that big of a deal, but it is something that you should be aware of if you are doing content under leveled. The raw damage of Thunderlord doesn't matter if you run out of ammo, so Whisper is still going to be the best for long encounters, infinite ammo does that sadly. On the flip side of that, infinite ammo and being optimal is cool and all, but have you ever shot lightning from a weapon and watched as swaths of enemies explode, or gotten that giddy feeling when you reach maximum RPM and perfectly land all your shots as precision so you can watch the health bar of whatever you're shooting drain away? Thunderlord allows you to take a break from the boring perfection that is Whisper and revel in absolute DPS carnage. I hope you found this review helpful. If you did, a positive rating would be appreciated. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.